I'm Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University, and today I want to talk to you about creating a high-quality abstract uh, for submission to an academic conference. So a lot of different conferences actually require the entire completed paper. They want to see the research that you have done and how you have communicated the findings, and they want something that is more akin to a journal article, because the idea is that um, you will very quickly go from conference to journal publication after you get feedback from the conference. However, there are some conferences that will accept a abstract of a research in progress or a quick overview of the types of uh, um, inquiry that you have undertaken for that particular um, study. And so in this case, what the conference organizers are typically looking at is how well you match the theme, how clearly you describe what is being done and why it's being done, why it's important, um, and uh, the, the role that this research has in the overall understanding of that particular field. So um, when you're writing an abstract, and we'll say for something like the um, uh, International Public Relations Research Conference, IPRRC, which is held every year in Orlando in early March. Their conference deadline for their abstracts are typically the first-ish week of November, and then you hear around the second-ish week of December as to whether your paper has been approved and accepted, and then you have from then until about February to complete the paper, and then you present it in March at the conference. Um, if you wanted to participate in a um, uh, paper competition and you can have the entire paper written, then you can do an earlier deadline like in January, but most people don't have their papers completed by January, so they're not eligible for that. So the first thing to know about IPRRC in this case is that it's a public relations conference. So if you're not somehow framing your research as being central um, to public relations and things that public relations um, practitioners or scholars would be interested in, then you're not going to get it approved at all. Um, it will not uh, fit the conference. And so the first thing to make sure is that um, you're very much promoting how and framing um, the public relations aspect of your study. The second thing is um, to clearly identify what your theory is. You know, it can be boring. You can say, this study is driven by agenda building, or this study examines agenda building whatever the case is. Um, within that, if you can also very clearly give an idea about the method that you're using, then that will help the reviewers understand the quality and the appropriateness of your study for the conference. And so instead of saying this study um, is driven by agenda building, you might say this survey examines the agenda building process. And so in that, I I've still used about the same number of words, except I've added survey instead of study. And so I've, I've telegraphed what type of method it is that I'll be using for that study. Um, so keep your abstract very closely, in this case, focused on public relations for IPRRC. Um, make sure that you clearly identify the theory very early on and that you identify the method that you're using. Um, from there, as much other things that you can do to explain what it is your study is about or the impact that it will have um, on the world or on the profession is really helpful in trying to make the case for your study. And so if you can relate the um, proposal to the theme of the conference, you might find more success there. If you can talk about how this is important to society in a normative view or how it's important to public relations practitioners, that would be especially important to folks like at IPRRC where they really want to make sure it's not too academic or too practitioner focused, but that it is for both academics and practitioners coming together. And so if you can show both sides of that, then that's fantastic. 
Often one of the things that IPRRC looks at is how much discussion will be generated by the topic. And so if you can address in the page limitation that you have for um, the abstract, anything about discussion or what uh, discussion might ensue, then that would be fantastic. If you have any early data that's collected, then certainly include that in there. Um, if you have started your data collection and your data collection is up to 100, but you know eventually it'll be up to 300, you might say that you're a third of the way through collection and then you might give what your, your end size is currently. Um, and then you might give a little bit of the results of where they're currently coming out. So the more that you can do to legitimize your study, um, and be super specific about what it is that you want to do, the more likely you are to be able to convey to the judges that your study m would fit the conference. That said, a lot of times when we're writing these abstracts, we are still determining what it is we want to do. You know, it's November and we're not we're going to present this until uh, March and a lot of things can change between November and March. And so one of the sort of arts of um, this process is to tell enough to be descriptive, but not so much that you've backed yourself into a corner. So if you have a very complicated experimental design and you have a lot of different um, uh, independent variables that you're working with, um, but then turns out one of the independent variables completely just doesn't work at all and you end up in analysis needing to drop that or do something else with it. Well, if you've written your entire paper um, abstract around that independent variable um, or the fact that there were several independent variables, etc., then you've backed yourself into a corner where automatically you're at a uh, nothing significant to report kind of a, a situation as opposed to if you can straddle that line between telling the reader what it is you're going to investigate and why it's important, but not be so super specific um, that you don't hang yourself and you give yourself um, a little bit of room to navigate, then you can really find that sweet spot where as your topic develops and as your data is collected and you get further into the study, you do have that um, leeway to move around. Because when you submit to something like IPRRC, the order that you have the authors in stands with whatever it was you said on your proposal, um, on your abstract submission. The title that you gave it stands. Your title is now what you said it was going to be, right? And so you're, you're locking yourself into a lot. You're locking yourself into author names as well as order, as well as paper title, and then what it is you're promising the conference organizers that you're going to talk about. So um, with the writing of the abstract, try to find that really nice sweet spot that's somewhere in between being specific about the theory, the method, the rationale and purpose and normative value, um, as well as the variables that are um, involved, but not so... Um, uh, descriptive that you're backing yourself into a corner if something ends up not working out. Um, this is obviously something that if you're in my class, I'm happy to help you with to, um, to tell you what you can back off of and what you need more of. Um, and it does come with practice, um, but I'm sure that your attempt is going to be fantastic. So if you are writing an abstract for IPRRC, um, I have a couple of um, uh, examples of award-winning projects as well as I just happen to get them accepted projects in the Blackboard for you. So make sure that you check out the samples um, and use those as your guidepost. The last thing to know is that every year, somehow slightly tweaked, um, you'll see a little bit different uh, formatting that they want or uh, way that they want you to cover the different topics in there. Always go with the most current call. Just because you have an abstract example, 
from three years ago that won the big jack does not necessarily mean that that's what the organizers want to see this year. And so that's certainly a very good indication of how you can wonderfully communicate what it is that you're looking um, to do in your study. However, you want to always use as the final determination, almost as a rubric, what the um, actual uh, current call for papers says. And so look for that with regard to how they want it formatted because it may be a little bit different than APA as well as the um, topic areas that they want you to include and what it is they want you to talk about in the abstract. And, and if they don't mention it and you don't have space for it, then you don't have to do it. Um, so look to that. And if they do have any kind of a grading or judging rubric, then you're going to want to pull that out too, uh, to make sure that you're hitting um, all the best um, possible places on that. So um, happy abstracting and good luck on getting your research um, accepted at an academic conference.